So I'm making a thing. And to make that thing, I need another thing. And as a part of that, I need a PCB. The board I'll be making today is an Arduino shield for a brushless motor controller. This is not a complicated board by any means, and doesn't really need a PCB, but I like things looking neat, and I've always wanted to try make one. I began in the most logical place, trying some specific PCB design software. Easy EDA seemed to be the most commonly suggested, so I Fusion 360 is a CAD workspace, not at all intended for designing PCBs. However, I had to create my parts here anyways for 3D printing. I thought, why don't I just sketch out my traces here as well? While a bit unorthodox, I found that this worked very well for me. I think my mind just works better in 3D. After using some other high-tech software, it took me about half an hour or so to design this board, and I found having 3D components that I could relate dimensions to very helpful. I have a plugin that lets me export a face as an SVG file. In Photoshop, I inverted this file, which left me with a PNG of the surface I would need to remove with the laser. Before we can do that, I need to prepare my board. I actually have a lot of copper blanks I got from an estate sale of a man who used to design TVs for Panasonic. The day was ending, and while I had no use for these materials at the time, they would have been binned, so I grabbed everything that I thought might possibly be useful one day. The board is painted in a flat black spray paint, and is ready for the laser. I'm using a new laser for this process, and yes, it is sponsored. As per usual, I only accept sponsors whose tools I actually want to use. I'm not a review channel. The laser packer interested me for its incredibly high resolution compared to the laser that I already had. It also has two different types of laser, allowing it to engrave almost anything, but that's something I want to use more in a future video. Using a painted offcut, I set up a power test in the software and, after a few tests at different resolutions, determined the power and scale I would need for my board. I set the laser to 2K resolution, but it can go all the way up to 8. With my board in place, I let the program run. The board came out beautifully on my first try. Pretty. Well, now <laughs> here's the thing. This is the stage I knew I would get to. The next part is the scary part. Next, we need to etch the board, for which we would need an etchant and a way to agitate the liquid as it does its work. I'm using ammonium persulfate as it's what I could buy locally. I mix one part crystal to five parts water. This mixture is added to a laboratory grade container and then put onto my agitator. This agitator build was meant to be part of this video, but it's um, not quite finished yet. Turns out a cheese container wasn't the best choice, but the process finished and I was left with my etched board. Oh, that's the money shot. Wow, we. <laughs> Now's the hard part, I've got to drill it. <laughs> so, entirely possible I f it up and waste all that effort, but uh, we'll see.
Look, I never said I was good at soldering. In fact, I'm quite terrible at electronics design in general. Regardless, I'm very happy with this for my first result. There's a lot to improve, of course. I wish I had tried a solder mask, amongst other things. There may or may not be a part 2 to this board. I haven't actually started making the mystery machine this is for just yet. Time will tell. Thank you to LaserPecker for supplying me with the laser used in this video. My patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.